Welcome to Outlook. Today we want to discuss our cover story which is on the stands uh, right now and you should all go and buy it. And this story as you can see is on the stock markets and the frenetic and the frantic rise in the Sensex over the past few months. In fact, most of you will remember that from end March this year till now the Sensex has moved from below 26,000 to now about 43, 44,000. That's a huge rise, unexpected rise and unanticipated. A lot of you have missed the bus because you never thought it can happen. A lot of you made lots of money during this period. But now, more than the Sensex, this cover story also has an additional component which talks about what is happening in the IPOs. In fact, what we are saying is that IPOs are a very good way to make money, to profit and to invest, but there are lurking dangers, there are tricky traps and you could get caught in one of them. And so this is basically a warning how not to get caught in that whole web of IPOs. The fact is that there is nothing wrong with IPOs per se. What is really the problem or the gray area is what is now being touted and now being sold aggressively and now being bought by people like you and I is pre-IPOs. What is pre-IPO? Pre-IPO is basically buying a share in an unlisted company before it gets the permission from SEBI for an IPO or before it brings in an IPO and gets listed on the exchanges for the first time. Pre-IPOs, unlisted companies, how do you buy such shares? Such shares are being sold across the country by brokerages, brokers, financial intermediaries, traders, HNIs, anybody who can get access to such shares are being sold as pre-IPOs. What is happening is that people are kind of selecting unlisted companies where promoters or employees or angel investors or some of the larger investors want to dispose of their shares for whatever reasons. One of the primary reason could be that they require cash for emergencies. The second may be that they, the company is actually coming out with an IPO and when, when it does come out with an IPO, SEBI has a lock-in period on the selling of the shares of the existing shareholders. For promoters, it's three years. For non-promoters, it's one year. So nobody wants to get locked in by that period. So sell it before the IPO, possibly at a discount, possibly at the same price, possibly at a profit. But it's definitely more than what they paid for a few years ago or several years ago. So these unlisted companies or pre-IPOs, shares are available. We have a list which is printed in the magazine of about 93 companies which, uh, whose shares are being sold aggressively online through YouTube, through different mediums. And so, but the fact is that how can people sell these unlisted shares and how do, they, how do we know that this is a pre-IPO, that there will actually be an IPO. So what happens is the game begins much, much earlier, even before the company has thought about an IPO. Whoever is a shareholder in an unlisted company wants to sell, financial meter, intermediaries and brokers get in touch with them or they get in touch with the brokers or the financial services companies and the shares are available in the market. These shares are now sold to people like you and I. Normally, you sell it to your family, your friends or people you know, but in this case, it's openly and publicly being sold to anybody. Now, in this case, if you buy these shares, the returns could be phenomenal. You could get a share for 100 rupees and it could go and get listed at 500 rupees. But the danger is that you don't know if the company will come out with an IPO. You don't know what the price will be. You don't know when the lock-in period will end because you will have a lock-in period as an existing shareholder. And you have no idea how much money you can make or lose. Then there is the second stage of this pre-IPOs. That is once the company has got the permission and has come out or submitted what is called the draft red herring prospectus, which all of you know what a red herring prospectus is. The draft goes to SEBI, SEBI clears it, and then there's a red herring prospectus, which is a final prospectus. Now, once the draft prospectus has been filed, SEBI is clearly in charge of the IPO process. And in this case, it allows lead managers and bankers to sell pre-IPO shares to the big institutional funders or HNIs. And that is because most of these HNIs and institutions want firm allotments. 
and firm allotments are not allowed during the IPO. So they get firm allotments pre-IPO. Now this pre-IPO allotment is different from the shares being sold to you and I during this period after the filing of draft prospectus. Because what is sold to the institutions is a price which is decided by the lead managers and the bankers and hence the price is fair. The institutional investors know what the fair price is, should be, what could be the IPO price and hence they are much more informed than you and I. But at this stage also, such shares are being sold to the retail investors, the small investors. Again, in this case, the safety factor is more, but you don't know about the price that you're getting. You don't know whether the price is a fair one or not, or what is the discounted discount you're getting, or whether you're getting a discount at all or not. So a lot of people are buying pre-IPO shares at this stage also. And obviously these two stages culminate into what is, for you and I, what is important are the listing gains. Most of the IPOs are oversubscribed. Most of the IPOs, the list closing price on the first day of the trade is can be more than the offer or the issue price. So there are profits to be made. After a few months, the price could go up and there are more profits to be made. But if you buy pre-IPO, you have no idea what the price will be one year down the line when you can sell. And one year down the line, the price could be below the issue price, below the offer price and you will be saddled with a share and the losses. And that's why, please explore pre-IPO. Please look at them, but be extremely, extremely careful because although this market is not entirely illegal, it is unregulated, it is unmonitored, and you have no idea what can happen to you. And more importantly, there is absolutely no legal recourse available to you to recover or recoup your money. Thank you very much and happy IPO investing.